God bless you, saints of God. Thank you so much for tuning in and viewing today. I pray that you all had a blessed, thankful Thanksgiving, and we're still continuing to thank the Lord. God is good. God is good all the time, and he said in his word that his mercies renew every morning. So I want to open up in prayer, and I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. So pray for me. Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this time of sharing, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you today, Lord God, and we call on you today for your wisdom and your words and your strength today, Lord God. We call on you today, Lord God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, to do what you want to do, Lord God. For my lips to say what you want to say, Lord God. For my heart, Lord God, to hear your heart, hallelujah. I pray today your kingdom come, your will be done today. I pray today, Lord, hallelujah, for your presence, hallelujah. For your presence, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you for your presence. Right now, I thank you for your presence. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. His presence is with us today. Where two or three are gathered together in his name. He said he would be where? In our midst. He's with us today. And that's what I love about the Holy Spirit. As we connect and have that relationship with him. He brings the peace that passes all understanding. He gives us the wisdom, and we need his wisdom every day. We need his wisdom every day. And I want to say to those that are having illnesses right now, don't give up. Don't give up your hope. Keep trusting in the Lord. Keep seeking his face. Intercessors, keep praying without ceasing. Keep praying. Just keep praying and don't give up. Just keep praying. Yes, we want God's will to be done, but pray according to our faith that's within us. And I think of all the people that Jesus healed when he was on the earth. He healed them. They came to him. He spoke words. He touched their bodies. And he made them whole. He didn't doubt. He didn't waver. But his word and his promise in whom he was healed the sick. Open up the blinded eyes, lame to walk. And I thank him today because we have that same power dwelling on the inside of us. And you know what's so important, saints, is that we keep abiding in him. That we keep abiding in him. When I say abiding in him, that we stay connected with the Lord. That we stay with the branches, stay connected to the vine, stay connected to him. Because that's where our life comes from. That's where the power comes from. That's where the, 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 the to stand comes from, really. To stand comes from our endurance. Hallelujah. Our endurance comes from him and is through his word. We're not to waver or doubt. And when we feel that coming on us a little bit, just call a friend. Just call a friend. And then let a friend touch and agree with you. So that we can get back in that place where we can believe God for miracles. He said greater works. Did he not say that? Greater works. I believe he said in the last book of Matthew that we would do greater works. And then he said he wants us to go out. So wherever that going out is, and it could be right there. It, relatives, it can be right there around you. You don't have to go overseas any place. You can do it right where you are, but go ye therefore, and we're to do the same works that he did, saints. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say this again, and I say it pretty often. Lay aside every excuse, every weight, everything that's going to hinder us, and be about what he is asking us to do. To do. Is that simple? Is that simple? That's what I want to say right now, but I got more to say about that. But I was meditating, thinking, and pondering, and it kept coming to me, trusting, trusting, trusting. Do we trust the Lord? Do we totally trust him to do what his word says? See, this is truth. This is real. Do we trust the pages that's in this book? Do we trust that? Because... I did a little thing. I was going to try to get it to the church in time, but it didn't work out. So I just did the best I could. Trusting. T. 
Trust in the Lord, hallelujah, with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. If I trust him, he's greater than the situation. If I trust him, I will walk by faith, hallelujah, and not by sight. That's when I'm trusting him, hallelujah. But so often, and I have done this myself, I started leaning to my understanding. Every time I lean to my understanding, it doesn't work out well. It usually goes just way over to, you know, but as I, if I, when I just totally surrender whatever the situation is to the Lord, he works it out. Because also in that scripture, it says, in all our ways to acknowledge him, what he wants to do with that, how we develop that trusting in him is acknowledge him so he can do what? Direct my steps. He wants to direct our steps. That's that's what he wants to do. When we get up in the morning, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just start praising him and thanking him. But he wants to direct our steps. So, Lord, today, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do today? What would you have me to say today? And I just, just thank the Lord that we get in tune to his speaking to us, which is through his word. And then we get in tune to trusting him and acknowledging him, every day will be a day that we can just lift up our hands at the end of the day and say, thank you, Jesus. I glorify you. I glorify you because you will even know you will have a peace in you for you to know that that day was God's day. That day, what he wanted to do in and through us was accomplished. And that's Proverbs 3, 5. Then I went to R in trusting God. I went to R and I came up with, Psalms 37, 7, rest in the Lord, hallelujah, and wait patiently for him. I'm going to stop right there. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. I'm not just talking about going to bed and going to sleep. It's better than that. Rest in the Lord. Learn how to do what? Be still. Learn how to be still. Learn how to be still so you can hear his voice. His voice, he's speaking, but he's speaking, yes, through his word. He might even want to speak through a sister or a brother or a pastor or a leader. He might want to speak through another means. As you be still, you will know and recognize when he's speaking to you. But if I'm all over the place, if we're all over the place, when he's trying to speak to us, we can't, how can we hear him? How can we hear him when I'm when I'm just all over the place, can't even think what my name is? You know what I'm saying? No, we got to learn how to rest in the Lord and then wait patiently for him. This is another thing. Instead of waiting patiently for him, I haven't heard from the Lord yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and take care of it myself. I got it. I got it. I know this is what he wants me to do. Then we put all the blame on, on God when God really didn't even tell us to do that. But we're, oh, this is what he told me to do. No, it is not. <laughs> Many times, hallelujah, when we're resting and waiting on him, hallelujah, whatever he tells us to do, it's going to line up with this word. It's going to line up with this word. That's all I got to say. It's going to line up with the word of God. So that's a good test for you to know that if God is speaking, he's going to line up with what his word says. If somebody is giving you a message or a word, line it up with what God's word says. If it don't go with what God's word has said, you might want to go like this. My pastor was talking about um, false teachers on Wednesday night Bible study. And you got to be able to discern and recognize a false teacher because you know what they do? Come on, Holy Ghost. They do miracle signs and wonders, but it's all about them to give them glory. What can you give me? What can you give me? What can you give me when they're reading your palms, when you're going to these people that knows all this nonsense? Hallelujah. And when you're going to them and they're giving you answers, they might be giving you some information. Hallelujah. But it's for their personal gain. You hear me? Mm, no, 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 no. We just need to stay focused on the Lord. Focus on his word. Be still and wait patiently. And if something comes across and you're not sure about it, just get, get to call your pastor. Call your pastor. Call your church. Let somebody help you out. They'll help you to line you up with what the word of God is saying. Don't fret because of the wicked person who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings um, schemes 
all his schemes together. That's those people that's doing all this stuff for the money. But be still and know and recognize God. Then I took the you in trusting. Hmm. Unity. Unity. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. If we each endeavor to keep unity, first of all, with the Lord. Unity for, to me would be in fellowship with him. Obeying him. Trusting him. That's part of the being a disciple. I'm now trusting God. I'm learning now to walk in his obedience. Then with that unity, he wants us to have it with one another. We need to be able to discern when someone is not in unity. Pray and ask the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit and he will tell you. Because if it's going against the word, if it's going against, I'm going to even go a little further, the man of God, the woman of God, if it's going against somebody else, your brother and sister, pray about it. Don't even receive it. Because you want to walk in the unity and the bond of love with one another. With one another. And if we if we recognize it, if we deal with it, it can be stopped right there. Right there. We can cut it off right there. It don't have to go any further. Because the first thing I do, and I would suggest, I just say, well, let's go. Whoever this person that we're, you're in disunity about, let's go and maybe fellowship with them and come to some communication and then pray together. And that usually takes care of a whole lot of nonsense. Then I took the S. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's seeking the weak. He's seeking those that are not even in fellowship with the word of God. You can be saved. Ask Jesus into your heart. He lives in your heart. But are you bearing the fruits of the spirit? My God, are you bearing and walking in the fruits of the spirit? Because you got to be sober. You got to be vigilant so you can recognize his strategies. So you can recognize the tactics of whom he is. Sober minded. Be on top of things. Be watchful. Be prayerful. Daily. This is not just every once in a while. You got to do this before you even hit the floor. You have to have your mind already made up. I'm going to be sober-minded, vigilant. I'm going to be watchful because of our adversary who is going around like a roaring lion, but he knows us too. And where is he going to attack? I'm going to let you know, and most of you know this, your weak spot. He's going to attack you where you're weak at. And if he and if your past was, was in the past of a lot of nonsense, and most past, most of us was just pure nonsense, he's going to try to pull something from that nonsense to put right here <laughs> in your mind. See, so you have to be sober and vigilant to recognize who that thought is coming from. Cast it down in, in the name of Jesus, because now we are what? New creatures. New creations, all things have passed away. All things are new. All things are new. T, take up the armor of God. Finally, my brethren, hallelujah, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of, now this is what I want to emphasize. Put on the whole armor. Not just, okay, I got on my, Helmet of salvation, and I'm good for the day. No, 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 no. You're not good for the day because that's just one part of that armor. You got to put on the full armor. Anybody in the military will tell you they don't go out there half dressed and not in their full, full uniform. They're totally full uniform from head to toe. Why? That's for their protection. That's for them. So the word of God tells us to put on the armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10, so that we will be able to stand against the wiles, hallelujah, of the devil. His wiles, his trickery, his lies, his nonsense, his sickness, his disease, all of that and more. How can we stand against it? We can put on that armor and be prepared for the day because it's not flesh and blood. So many times when the attacks come against us, we're thinking it's the person that we're dealing with. It's the person that's coming against us. No, we got to be smart enough to know that we're not dealing with 
flesh and blood. These are spirits. I can't go there now because that's a whole nother teaching. But these are spirits that are motivating through that person and using them. That's what they're doing, just using the person. So the thing is, if I'm going to be have on my armor, I'm going to recognize that. Then what am I going to do after I recognize it? Then I'm able to pray against the spirit that's operating and not beat up the person that's standing there in front of me. I'm going to leave that alone. We got to go right to the spirit and I and discern it. God, the Holy the, the Holy Spirit is real. He will tell you. He will show you what you are dealing with. It might be jealousy. It might be a lying spirit. It, it's so much out there. Just read your Bible because there's so much out there. But if I have on my armor, if I'm asking for discernment, the Holy Spirit is good. He's going to give you what you're dealing with. Then you go right against that. You go right against the powers, the rulers of darkness, and spiritual witness in high places. Then the I, in trust, in trusting God. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Be anxious. In other words, don't be so much in a hurry that you just got to do a go or see. Be anxious for nothing, but be in a hurry to do this. Lord, I'm acknowledging you again. Everything by prayer, it says, and supplication. Pray about everything. The Lord does not have deaf ears. He wants to hear our petitions. He dwells, in, when we start praising him, we know he dwells in our praises. And then we want to give him our supplication. He wants to hear our petitions because he's the one and the only one that can really do something about it. If we want it done right. If we want it done right. So be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Let your request, let God hear your request. Day and night, night and day. Let him hear your request. He said, he said it is where his eyes is on the righteous. His ears are open to our cry. Let us start crying out to the Lord. Let us lift, don't even, well, I don't even want to go there with the media. Turn the TV on and there's a lot to cry out to the Lord for. There's just a lot going on right now. We all know that. But instead of murmuring, complaining, and, and this or that, no. Let's make our request made known unto the Lord. Tear down the principalities. To, Lord, do what you need to do. G. All give thanks to the Lord, hallelujah, for he is good, for his mercies endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercies endures forever. Just give thanks. Why? Because he's good. This is going to help you build your trust. All these things that I've, I've shared today, they're to build our trust in the Lord. I'm going to give thanks. This don't look right, sound right, feel good. But I'm not operating with the external. I'm operating with the internal. I'm operating. I heard my pastor preach on this Sunday. Pastor, I'm still in your notes. I'm operating from the internal, not the external, because the external is all over the place in our personal lives. In our loved ones' lives, in our country, it's all over the place. So I got to operate from that hidden man. And I can give thanks to God because why? God made the universe. He's the creator of all of this. And he got a time when he's gonna come and get the saints. Pastor's preaching on that too. That's a good that's that's good if y'all want to go back and look at some of the, the videos of Pastor Bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, because see, the Lord is gonna be returning. Mm. And my prayer is, when he come, are we trusting God? When he come, are we about our father's business? When he comes back, have we been faithful and walking in obedience to the Lord? Saints, as never before, this is time to pray. This is time for prayer as never before. This is time to pray without ceasing. When someone comes on your heart, just start praying for them. You don't have to know the details. You don't have to know everything. A sister called me, but I'm trying to get out here, trying to get my little notes together. And a sister called me this morning and she said, what can I pray for you for? I knew that was God. 
I couldn't even tell her all the whole story. I just said, pray for me because I'm, I'm trying to get out the house, but I got a couple things you can pray for me about. Now, see, the Lord put me on her heart. The Lord knew I, my situation. Since I saw you last, saints, I got a call. Matter of fact, I was I was on White Avenue and I got a call <laughs> from a family member to inform me that my nephew in Georgia had been shot seven times. I got a call. So you know what? The first thing that hit my head, I'm driving. Is my nephew alive? Or is he? But God has my nephew still here. God has my nephew now a born again Christian. God has my nephew now with a plan and a purpose for his life. And that plan and purpose, because I'm standing on the promises of God, is to prosper him, not to harm him, and to give him a hope and a future. So I am praying. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I want you to join in with me and pray for my nephew and pray with me and thank God. See, I'm thanking God as well for his miracle, for his miracle, his miracle of life. Because this happened at least six or seven. It was since the last time I saw you. So that means he's still here. So I just desire your prayers. We need to continue to pray. There's many, many, many that are hospitalized. There's many um, suffering and dealing with um, loss of loved ones for many reasons. Loss of loved ones. There's many, many going through a period of mourning right now. As never before, we need to pray one for another. We need to pray for our leadership. We need to start with the White House down to the churches. Matter of fact, start with the churches first because God said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves to pray, seek my face, and then he said for us to do what? Turn from our wicked ways, he would hear from heaven and heal the land. So let's just start with the church first and then go down from the other places of authority. Pray for those who are in leadership. We can criticize all day, but that's not going to help not one thing. But if we start praying, we can see the results that God wants to bring. That's as simple as that. We want healings. We want this coronavirus under control. We want people that are sick to be made whole. So I'm going to pray right now and pray with me and pray with me and pray for me as I pray right now. Father God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your word, Lord God, and I just pray that your word minister to the hearts of your people. I pray that they will not just take the word and just be a hearer, but they will be a doer, that they will put this word into practice, that they will be a doer of your word, like it says in the book of James. I pray today, Lord God, hallelujah, that your word, hallelujah, will touch the hearts of those that are in the hospitals, those, Lord, who have been afflicted in their bodies, touch, heal, and restore your word said you sent your word and you healed them and delivered them from all manner of destruction, sickness, and disease. By Jesus' stripes, hallelujah, they're healed, whole, and restored. By Jesus' stripes, raise them up, Lord God. Raise them up from the hospital beds, oh God. Restore them to life, oh God, that abundant life of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let the family members not give up, but let us keep fighting the good fight of faith, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, you have the last say. You have the last say. Touch, Lord. Heal and restore, Lord God. I'm asking, Lord, for a miracle for our land. Heal the land, Lord God. You see all the things that are going on? There's nothing that's happening that you don't know about. Heal the land, Lord God. Bring in those that are lost. There's many that are still out there that need to come in. Bring them in, Lord God. Hallelujah. Bring them in. Bring them in, Lord. Bring the lost in, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord. For my family members, for my husband, his body, and for all those, Lord God, that have loved ones, that, that have gone astray, children, prodigals, you know, Lord God. We're praying that you just bring them in, Lord. We're praying you bring them in, Lord God. We, I thank you today, Lord, for an opportunity to be able to stand here, to be able to minister to your people. I thank you for that, Lord God. I pray today that all week long, that we will keep our minds stayed on you 
We will stay in that perfect peace, Lord God, that passes all understanding. We will pray, hallelujah, without ceasing, oh God. Meet the needs of your people. Be Jehovah Jireh in every person's life. Be Jehovah Jireh. Be their provider, whatever it might be that their needs are. Lord, I'm asking, we're asking for you to be the provider, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you today. We thank you for those who are in need of jobs. We thank you for opening up the right doors, the doors, Lord, for them to walk in, Lord God. Divine favor upon your people as never before. The Lord God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you as never before, Lord God. Give your people your peace as never before, Lord God. Keep us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.